What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the basement. JK joins us here. Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year. Good to have you back. <laughs> here to talk about uh, Fallen Angels, a project you and Peter David are embarking on once again. And uh, what the fuck are you doing here, and where's the hot blonde chick you were last week? Oh, I came back. It, where, you came, for, where were you? Humana, <laughs> humana. Oh, this whole stripper universe, like nothing but titties everywhere and poles and shit. <laughs> And what? As in Lou, and us? Why did you come back? We ran out of singles. Uh, oh. You've been there. Uh, oh, thank you. You going back? Oh, you know it. So let's wrap this up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Starting out, I uh, want to let you guys know that we tested out Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions for the PS3. This game is uh, fantastic. It's narrated by Stan Lee, which as soon as me and Steve saw that, our mouths dropped, and yeah. all of a sudden we were eight-year-olds again watching Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Geekgasm. Oh, totally. Geekgasm, yeah. It's like, hey there, true believers, Excelsior, oh, enough said. You stopped and, yeah. This yeah. game was given to me by my lovely friend Christina for my birthday last week, and uh, my buddy Rob tested it out. Uh, basically, you've got, like, all the four different Spider-Men that we've seen over the course of, like, the past uh, two, three years, give or take. Plus twenty ninety nine. Plus twenty ninety nine, which was uh, that that was a nice uh, staple back to my years, teenage years. Twenty years ago, almost. Uh, there's this whole big time travel tablet that Spidey accidentally shatters, gets spread throughout these different dimensions, <laughs> and it's up to the different Spider Men, led by or guided by Madam Web, to go and put the tablet back together. Um, the plot's thin at best, but it promises to be a lot of fun. We're only about like five minutes into it's the a game. Comic book plot. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know so. Which uh, comic book standards? You're you're now officially comic book dead because you, you died and came back. Sorry about that. Next thing you know, I have a clone. Yeah. <laughs> I'll kill you, you fuck. Again. <sighs> so thank you, Christina, for my game. And I also want to thank my friend Kristen for this book by Ben Thompson called Badass. This is a documentation of all of the warlords and. Um, Tyrants and warriors, gladiators, all people throughout history that actually have lived. Let's see. Who do we have? Khalid bin Walid. That's a funny name. Wolf the Quarrelsome, William the Conqueror, Genghis Khan, Vlad the Impaler, Miyamoto Musashi, Peter the Great. <laughs> that's me. I'm not Russian, though. Uh, Julius Caesar. He's taking his time. Leonidas, Ramses II. I'm going to start reading this on the train. Sounds fucking cool. There's actually a couple of little illustrations in here, but other than got that, guys, it's a real book. What does badass mean? Badass? What? Yeah. No, it's badass, Steve. Oh. I wonder how you get by in life. Do you remember to breathe when you walk? No, actually, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thank you, Kristen. Thank you, everybody, for wishing me a happy birthday last week. I'm officially an old bastard. Uh, I, I see that. I see that. There's sweat on there now. <laughs> That's the... Ah! Oh. So, Fallen Angel, Return of the Sun. Uh, nice cover, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, basically, what I'm getting from it so far is this guy who kind of looks like Dark Man. He's uh, like an avenging angel of some kind. He goes and yep. he kills this mob boss, and it seems like he was asked to do this by like a kid who the mob boss like killed his parents basically and right. this kid I don't know if he specifically asked this guy Jude to do it or if he prayed for it or something uh, I don't know if they're gonna you guys are gonna allude to that in the future and then he runs away from he, after he sets the mob boss on fire and his henchmen are like chasing him and he runs away and there's this big mythical city that he drives into and the city then disappears right uh, the city, the city that it takes that this book has always taken place in is called Bet Noir. Okay. Um, and yeah, the the idea is it just ceases to exist during the day, but it always comes out at night. So what happened? What you saw there was a sunrise, and he snuck in while the people were chasing him. Okay. Just before the city went away, just before sunrise. So that's how he escaped. Um, and the idea of Bet Noir is is it's a ancient biblical city. And it was founded by Cain. It used to be called Enoch, mm -hmm. which was his son's name. He named the city after his son. It's now That's actually a real Bible story. That's that was the actually Book of taken, Enoch. Yeah. The Book of Enoch was taken yeah. out of the Bible back in 420, I think, A.D., when Constantine converted to Christianity and rewrote the entire Bible. As far as, you know, he just threw in whatever he wanted to. And all the good, cool books were left out. Yeah, and this is kind of like, this is kind of where, where that 
that mythology is kind of where this story takes place. Okay. And that's and uh, the main character, Fallen Angel. The reason it's called Fallen Angel is she's actually um, Angel Guardian class that um, that defied God. And and uh, unlike uh, Lucifer, she didn't get you know cast down to hell or anything. She just got cast down to earth. Things could be worse. Yeah, things could be worse. I mean, we've got pollution and shit, but at the same time, we've got beer and titties. Right. And she, I, I have a feeling she enjoys Jeez. both. I, I, I'm getting that. She was pretty bad at. She kicked the door in. Yeah. Like this, this dude is. Uh, this is our son, right? Jude, Jude is her son. The, the guy you were talking about that was like the avenging angel mm. is is her son. Yeah, and he used to be a priest. <laughs> I, yeah, I got that actually. Yeah. And now he's uh, fucking some cute blonde girl. She's blind. She's blind. Yeah, that's cool. Because he's he's burned to a crisp. <laughs> right. That's all he can get. Hey, <laughs> or that's all he's comfortable with. I mean, he's he was in a whorehouse mm -hmm. <laughs> when she kicked down the door. That's. So he probably could have gotten any of those chicks, but I think the idea is he's more comfortable with the blind chick because he's not That's, yeah. quite happy. I noticed that. Like, she was getting up, and then she, like, like on the end table, she was reaching for her glasses to put on. Yeah. And that's the That's artwork that you had the last time. Well, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, actually. Yeah, uh, the last time I was here, I, I showed you some black and white pages. And then, that was actually pretty exciting, especially the club scene. I remember liking uh, the original that you had because I just like the lighting effect that you use with just, you know, basically all silhouette and just, like, the slight light on, on the side of the faces and everything. And this, you know, it was a it was a hard panel, effect. and I had to figure out a way to get all these people in there and get it done in time. And, and like, uh, yeah, the idea was silhouette, less detail. I, uh, I also looks kind of cooler. I really liked this character, like right up until the whole water balloon thing. And not because I didn't like the idea of the water balloon filled with gasoline, but like it, the dude was like totally fucking badass. He's like, I'm the patron saint of lost causes. What a water balloon, you son of a bitch! Not water, gasoline. And also, FYI, there's no smoking in here. You lost me there. <laughs> you, you did, but I'm okay with it. I moved but on. The idea of that scene is, is kind of cool because, like, the worst thing that ever happened to this character is he got burnt alive. Mm. And 80% of his body is, like, scar tissue now. So and like, he did that to somebody yeah. else. That's so that's, I'm not yeah. saying, like, he yeah. killed this guy because, you know, right here is henchman, like, it's like, you're going to be okay, Jerry, you're going to be okay. And yeah. he throws the blanket over him, so I'm guessing we may see this guy again. Probably. Mm. But the, the coolest thing is, like, right after that, he's like, yeah, he might live, but Survival's he's never going to be. Oh, it's cracked up to <laughs> yeah. me, and there's just a close-up the like, of not his fucked be okay. up grill piece right <laughs> yeah. there. So uh, who's this guy that he meets at the end? This guy that he okay. runs into him once in the club, and the guy's like, the mysterious oh, stranger. Never, we'll never meet him again. We'll never see each other again. He's like, mm, we will. Yeah. And that's now all Enoch. of a sudden... That's the son of Cain. I told you about Bet Noir, how it was a city founded by Cain. Right. It's a very ancient city. And the original name of the city is Enoch. Is Enoch, so. which was named after Cain's son. Which is this guy. Which is this guy. And he's come back to see how his city is doing. Okay. We don't, I, I, I have no idea. I haven't talked to Peter about it yet, but I have no idea like uh, why he's still alive or how he came back or where he was. But the fact is, this well, is the founder. Of, this is the, the son of the founder of the city, and he's come back. And uh, Jude is uh, one of his direct descendants. Hey, Jude. I refrain. <laughs> um, I actually have a little bit. I was of waiting Jude. for that. Yeah, it was gonna happen. It was gonna happen. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys are throwing this into it, but according to, uh, they actually built a like a kind of Dungeons and Dragons esque role playing game around the concept of. Uh, Enoch and Cain and everything oh, really? and how it, it, it was called Vampire the Masquerade wherein Cain oh. became the first vampire. Oh, yeah, uh, he was mm. basic, Cain was cast out of Eden after he murdered his brother Abel and he was cursed by God. God gave him three chances to say I'm sorry and Cain basically said fuck you each time. And Good for him. Yeah. Each time, uh, God sent one of his archangels. It was Gabriel, Raphael, and Michael. And Michael. Donatello. All the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Knew it was going to happen eventually. The splinter went. Even hey, though there was dude. only one technical Ninja Turtle in there, and that was Raphael, you fucks. But nevertheless, they each cursed him with something different. Like, you'll never... Uh, Gabriel was the angel of death, and he's like, you'll walk the earth forever. And, and Raphael over. said, you'll never... Uh, like you'll never taste uh, the harvest of the land again, or something like that. Which basically, right. like you'll never enjoy food again. You'll live on carrion for the rest of your life. And the final time was Michael said, "Look, God said to say you're sorry, and we'll we'll be cool." And Cain said, "No." And Michael was basically like the lead archangel. He had like the sun sword and everything. Right. And he said, "My sword will forever burn you." So basically, Cain became the very first vampire. Oh, cool. So technically, Cain's kind of still alive if you go along with that. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the reason this guy's still alive, but I'd be a little giddy in my pants if that was the case. <laughs> I don't know if there's any uh, uh, vampiric lore in this at all. Um, 
but uh, it's definitely a lot of that like religious mythology, Old Testament stuff. I like stuff. shit like yeah. that. So and I'm... in fact, in the in the next issue, in issue two, we actually go back in time and we see um, Bet Noir or Enoch, as it was mm -hmm. called back then, as That's it cool. was in like its full glory. That, yeah. You can actually look you know. up the original book of Enoch on like Wikipedia or any yeah. uh, Google site. I would definitely site. recommend it because I read that in pre preparing for this and it, it was uh, really interesting cool, reading. Right? Yeah. It's, yeah, All the best stories were taken out of the Bible. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Now, is this a finite series or is this going to keep going? This is a, a four-part miniseries, like, okay. uh, much like um, the, the last one. Do you have anything else planned for like after this? Uh... I always wait till issue four to ask when okay. the next one is, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of focused on this, but I'm sure there will be because the uh, same thing is... I mean, as, it seems like a kind of a wide open world. You yeah, I think we're do doing at least with. one miniseries uh, Have every they seen year. Kane yet? Like, is, has Kane been around? Or is it Kane just has son? never shown up. The closest okay. we got is Enoch, and, and we're going to see a lot of him, and he's taking an interest... We're getting closer. Yeah, we're getting close. That would be that would be sweet. Oh game. man, that's fucking. Yeah, he's got to be a badass. Totally, I mean, it's the world's first murderer. Yeah, <laughs> you know? um, got some okay. sketch covers here. What yeah, what we did is, is um, we did a retailer incentive um, with this. Thank you. Um, and uh, the idea was, if the um, retailer got twenty or more or purchased twenty or more, they would get a free sketch cover. That's and cool. I thought that would be a great idea, so I volunteered to do it, thinking it would be like 30 or 50. You know, I might spend an afternoon doing these sketch covers. I got a box of 300, so I guess the book did pretty well. Ooh. <laughs> That's good. So I've been like, See, spending the last week sketching these things. It's but been a fun I, week for you, hasn't it? Oh, it's oh, fucking oh. <laughs> <laughs> I repeat, do you sleep? <laughs> Not anymore. Wow. So I brought you guys, uh, I brought you guys two, you know, to split amongst yourselves. So these, cool. these are... Maybe we can uh, hang these up in the basement, these. actually. You guys can't have these. these are There's ours. only 300 in existence of these, so retailers, if you got them, enjoy them. Oh, they will. Uh, and if you want one, uh, we got this one that I'm going to sketch right here in the basement, and we'll come up with a... a I, I've actually got a pretty cool one. Uh, I don't know too much about Fallen Angel, and mm -hmm. I actually felt like, you know, as I was reading through it, like, I, I got basically the gist of it, where, right. like, you know, this guy's some kind of avenging angel, we found out this you is his mother. You got what's important in the story, but yeah. there's a lot more. Like, I felt like yeah. if, I, if I knew more about the original characters, like, I would appreciate it a lot more, mm -hmm. but there's an omnibus out now for it, is right? Yep, volume two omnibus. Uh, IDW has three of them. Uh, they have volume one, which is issues one through... Uh, 21. Okay. Um, volume 2 just came out, and that's issues 22 to 33 of the regular series. And then it also has the, the four-issue miniseries that I recently did with Joss Whedon's angel character, Illyria. Okay. There was kind of a crossover thing, so there's those four issues. And then there's, they have a Volume 0 where they reprinted the, the DC run back when uh, it was Fallen Angel started at DC. Mm. And they went 20 issues or so, and then... Uh, DC canceled it, and Peter David brought it to IDW. So now all of those. So like basically, if you get those omnibus, three omnibuses, you get the whole story. Now they would follow the the path of the mother basically throughout most of this. Is this story going to follow more of the son, or is it going to involve? Well, her? the thing about Fallen Angel, it's never really just about Illyria, the okay. Fallen Angel. It's it's about the city of Betonwar, and there's a huge cast of people. You know, okay. from you know, uh, one of my favorite characters is Benny the Snake, and he's kind of the guy that greets you. And his story is he was the actual snake, snake in from the, the Garden, Garden of Eden. Eden. I figured yeah. that's where that was going. And he's the guy that, like, if you're new in town, he's the guy that always finds you and says, hey, there's a shortcut down this alley, and then he devours you. <laughs> wow. I like the fact that his name is Benny. I don't know why. I think this is funny. Benny the Snake. Yeah, and he's actually, he's actually an ancient character, so when we go back in time in the second issue, we meet Benny as he was in Old Testament times. I like That's that. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he's been the, whole, the comic basically revolves more around the city as a character in and of itself. Yeah, and the city so. actually has a personality. You get the impression that the city likes certain people and doesn't like certain people, attracts certain people. It'll draw you to it kind of like in that Hellraiser kind of way. Okay. You know, where, where like the, you know, the box will drag you to hell if mm -hmm. you're obsessed enough about it. Right. Uh, it'll also throw you out if it doesn't like you. you know, yeah, so. I, I got something to that effect. Like she had said, uh, you know, you, you expect the city to save you. You go out and do these fucking stupid things and you expect the city to save you. He's like, well, yeah. it did. Yeah, it, because it does. <laughs> you know, um, Jude doesn't, uh, as far as we know, particularly have any superpowers or stuff, but yet he's jumping in the air, firing his guns, going through a window and landing 30 feet below and running away. All right. Somehow he always ends up okay. You know, he's... Burned now, the shit. How did he, yeah, speaking of, how did he get old Dark Man in the first place? That happened in the, um, the original ongoing series. And, and what happened there is 
originally the fallen angel was kind of like the A-team character. Like you'd go to her, you'd meet her in a bar, and if you needed help and she thought you were worthy, she'd help you. Okay. Because she, she was that kind of person. She's um, a nice gal. Jude was her son that, uh, that I guess apparently she had had this kid in the DC run mm -hmm. and put it in, you know, threw the kid in the uh, uh, monastery or something. Just, you know, you raise my child and don't let it ever come to that in a war. In the IDW run, he found his way back because okay. the city had drawn him in. Um, and, and it was like the worst thing that could ever happen to her. He was supposed to be a priest and he was supposed to be a normal guy. And now he's become, uh, because he's a direct descendant of Cain, the father was also a, a descendant of Cain. He becomes magistrate of Bette Noir. Now he's trapped by the city, but he's also protected by the city. What happened at the end is, is he ended up saving the world by fighting a, a demon Moloch and got burned to death. And she made a deal with God saying, bring him back. And God kind of being a, a more of a trickster mm -hmm. brought him back, but left him burnt to shit. And then they ended up trading roles. So he became the uh, patron saint of lost causes. He kind of took her role as the protector of taking on these jobs. And then she became magistrate. That's so now cool. they're kind of switched. So that's what's going on here is, is, is she's actually responsible for running the city, but he still thinks he's protected by the city because he was once magistrate. And, and, the evidence shows he kind of is. Okay. And, and the fact that uh, Enoch, the son of Cain, is looking after him <clears throat> and taking interest in him means there's some really cool things. Uh, so ahead Enoch's basically his great, 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 great grandfather. Great, yeah. From way, way, way back. A lot of more greats added. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for your sketch cover, uh, which we're going to give away, you've got one week to answer this question. Uh, so according to you know most of uh, the books that were taken out of the Bible, Cain built this city, Enoch, and all of his descendants have inhabited it. Uh, who was Cain's mate? Who was the girl that Cain spawned all of these children with? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to go back and uh, look through your you know early Christian religion. <laughs> go for this to Sunday one. school. <laughs> they, I think this is a pretty good question. Actually, yeah, that's so, a good one. I don't. No, it's not Jane Fonda. Fuck that <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Fuck that <laughs> fuck No, we're good. We're right. good. You're no, I, I pro... New Year's resolution, we're going to be calm. We're going to be good. Jane Fonda. Fucking, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking, nice fucking, Tommy. Oh, take it. Inching me, AJ on the fade. No more inching me, AJ on the fade. What's AJ okay. on the fade? Oh, you mean Jay Fana? Drink it. <laughs> Drink it. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, no, no more inching me, AJ on the fade. No more inching me, AJ on the fade. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh. Oh, how? Ew. That was it's a little drooly. Ew. Ooh. So, yeah, we're good. Um, what other artwork do you got for us here? Okay, yesterday I had like one of the greatest days of my life. I got to meet one of my heroes. Uh, I actually met him before at, at various events and stuff, but uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan of uh, Alex Robinson. Okay. And um, I commissioned him to do a, a Fallen Angel piece. That's so pretty awesome. That. And I just wanted to see, uh, I'm, I love uh, Box Office Poison, and I like uh, pretty much everything he's done. Um, so I was, wanted to see what he could do with these characters. And you can see here we got uh, Benny the Snake, um, Dolph runs the bar, and uh, Jude and, and Fallen Angel. And he did sort now of the, like the Nighthawks. Yeah, it's yeah like, it's like, like, to take it, if you guys don't know what that is, it's that very famous painting with the bar pool. from the outside yeah. on the corner mm -hmm. as all the different people like around the It's been Frank redone Sinatra, so Mount many Monroe. different times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been done with I mean, the, it's been the zombified. It's yeah. been, you know, early Hollywood eyes. It's been everything eyes. And now it's been fallen angel eyes. That's awesome. <laughs> and he even put a silhouette of one of his characters from Box Office Poison. That's Sherman. So That's those that cool. know Box Office Poison... That's Sherman right there, the, the star of Box Office. I'll tell you what, this yeah. hasn't been done yet. It oh, hasn't shit. been Pete's basement. basementized. Oh. That's next. <laughs> oh, that, that's I got, uh, I got a little project. Good thing I have so much time. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get on that. <laughs> I bet you the retailers would find that fucking and Fallen Angel very covered pretty upsetting. 
And then I, I, I brought this artwork. I, ne- I don't know if I ever showed That's you guys this. Shit, no, I never saw that one. But this was, uh, oh, God, IDW did a thing. I'm trying to remember the name of it. But I, I, I just basically took a cover and, like, redid it because I just loved uh, the celluloid man. From, um, that guy's got a video camera for a head. No, he's got a film projector for a head. That's what I meant. <laughs> no, really trippy looking. Mm, What's yeah. he shooting at there? Hmm? What's on the? Is that a table? I'm losing the perspective. No, no, this is bit. the mandroid. It's just like a, okay. There's a guy with a brain, right? It's it's a guy with a fishbowl brain head. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Man with a brain. Yeah. And we were talking about uh, Spider Man and his amazing friends. I saw like, when you put this up on yeah. your uh, fan page. They're flying away, and he's just like, Can uh, I get a, pants around his I ankle. I need to take a good long look at. <laughs> Yeah, keep an I absolutely need a print of this, man. This was like what got me into comics. I saw the colored version uh, that you put up online. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you the file the, if you want to. Yeah, I would you love make to. Yeah. And then I have to have you sign it, and that's going right up there. Awesome. This is what got me into comics in the first place. This like, is what I do. Like in between every issue, I try to find time to to do like fanboy stuff. Mm. And that, I always wanted to do Spider Man as Amazing Friends, and I always wanted to do that scene where Spider Man was frustrated with his pants around his ankles. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> you know, like, just like, why do I have to fucking change? <laughs> oh. oh. No. <laughs> no. Um, the other thing I recently did, I don't know if you saw it, was the Star Trek Star Wars crossover. No, I didn't see that one yet. Okay, Darth Vader meets the Borg. It's on my Facebook page. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, instead of the Borg assimilating him because of all the midichlorines, they couldn't assimilate midichlorines, they didn't understand it. So the nanites just didn't know what to do with it. So the midichlorians kind of took it over. And now he has like this Borg army that have lightsabers for arms. And I did, I did this cover with like just these, this army of Borgs with like red lightsabers <laughs> coming out of their That wrists. is complete. And deep Darth Vader behind. Yeah, you've got to see it. I'm using it for my uh, profile picture. So when you see that okay. Darth Vader thing, you've got to check it out. Yeah. There is a lot of little nerds with oh, fucking hard ons. Like, I know I put it up and there was no fanfare. I'm like, God, I thought this was the coolest idea ever. And like, that's because they haven't recovered it. from shock yet. <laughs> Trust me. And then this is a, a, a an idea I came up with. I wanted to do called Steam Witch. I wanted to do like a all ages kind of adventure story. Nice ass. Yeah, all ages. <laughs> with, I don't think with, all ages can see an ass like that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, basically, it's 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 a kind of steampunk world where where uh, Steam Witch is kind of like a Jedi. She's kind of the last of her kind. It's a myth. Mm-hmm. They don't really even know it exists. Uh, and yeah, she meets these two people. And it's kind of like a Johnny Quest type thing, okay. you know? Like it's it's a family adventure. It's episodal. It's very simple. But I just always wanted to do that kind of all ages story. So, and this is cool. uh, this would be the cover. And yes. She's got an ass. Yeah, she's got a great ass. <laughs> my, my fiance saw this. She's like, "Oh, nice ass. Oh, there's a robot in there too, in there." <laughs> <laughs> Everything else was the, the ass was drawn first. Yeah. Uh, Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong at all. Speaking of wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally, man. Unfortunately, uh, not everybody hit bats a thousand. Uh, moving on to the rest of this week in comics, uh, also from IDW, uh, Dungeons and Dragons: Dark Sun. Came out this week. Yeah, I do not. I wasn't. I'm not really one for the whole post-apocalyptic worlds thing anyway. Mm. Like the original, the other Dungeons and Dragons series that IDW's got out was uh, really cool. It's more, you know, knights and dragons. Took place in stuff. medieval times, right? Yeah. yeah, this is more a post-apocalyptic future, but it just like all of a sudden this one like really herby type character is out to kill this barbarian warlord that you see on the cover, and like he want the barbarian guy just fucking everybody up. As one would guess, he is. And then all of a sudden, like, he makes friends with this guy that was just out to kill. Like, dude, you never stood a chance against him in the first place. And now this guy's going making friends with you. And then they're flying away on this giant, uh, like, manta ray thing that was buried under the sand. That I don't know if he knew it was there, but he stabbed the ground with his knife. And then the thing just takes off and starts flying. And then we meet this, uh, they get, like, not hijacked, but they, they... they get offered a ride across the desert by these pirates on a desert ship. Like, like the hiking? ship is sailing across the desert. And then the, de- the ship gets eaten by this weird octopus thing that we don't see. It's like this weird leviathan thing gets pulled down into the sand. Actually, describing it, it sounds escape. like a cool Mobius type thing. I, I found it incredibly difficult to follow. I found it, like, totally... It was so like I really did not care for the relationship immediately between the two main characters. Tentacles. They try to make it funny. They try to make it like I guess believable, but I couldn't. I couldn't follow it, and I just wasn't into it whatsoever. It's not what I would expect from Dungeons and Dragons. Not at all. There were no Dungeons or Dragons. Not at all. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> 
Um, one thing I did like, and I continue to like, fortunately, uh, from Boom Studios, Stanley's Starborn issue two. Uh, basically, yeah. This it's mm -hmm. it's been so much fun reading things that are like away from the big two and all this continuity bullshit and things that just stories get scrambled and things like that. It, this is a refreshing change of pace. It's early. This is the perfect time to get into it. Basically, this guy finds out that he's some sort of a descendant from uh, like. This starborn race. Earth is not apparently the only planet with humans on it. Uh, humans okay. have existed for quite some time. And this guy was sent to Earth to hide amongst the humans uh, because he's like the heir to this ancient empire. And this other like kind of galactic federation of different races don't really like this empire thing. So I'm not actually sure at this point who the good guys are. So it's Federation That's versus cool. the, uh, Empire? Pretty much. It's Think Star Wars, but at the same time, you're now not sure if Emperor Palpatine is the good guy or Luke Skywalker. Because this guy is very much Luke Skywalker. I like Luke. But I got the impression, judging from like this whole Council of Aliens thing, that most of this council is good guys. I think. Except for like one particular... Douchebag. Little lizardy looking motherfucker. Can I point out something about the art too? Yeah. Uh, and and I, I should just for full disclosure, I should say this guy's a friend of mine, Mitch Garad. But I mean, look at that. Look at the effects he does. No, he's, it is really he's cool. It's like I mean, everybody always overlooks a colorist, but uh, this this guy, the I, colorist, always underrated. Yeah. Oh yeah. But they there's, make or there's break some books. He does some like really great work. Is he only doing this book, or is he coloring all of them? I'm not sure what he's doing. I actually, I met him when he was doing his own series called, uh, uh, what was it? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, but he was doing, wow. he was doing his the, own the series, night and they, they here like, saw his coloring. And are they, phenomenal. They Did you take a look at those? What? The, uh, this all like these whole oh, greens and, night, and yeah. blues yeah. that he does in yeah. there. He, That's he, fantastic. He, he does he does really good like uh, flare effects mm -hmm. and like you know uh, lighting effects that. Uh, it looks like GG. It's it's he, it's very distinguished. Like you know when you're looking at his color work. Mm -hmm. You know you know when you see it. I, I'm I'm totally appreciating this story. Like I said, it's refreshing. It's new. Uh, I like all of the Stanley books that Boom is putting I out. I need to pick yeah. up a single one. I don't know why, man. I'm gonna wait for the. Trade. Well, plus the writing. It's Chris Robertson. Like yeah, he, yeah he's. For, uh, also, he I should. For full disclosure, another friend of mine. But Fair enough. <laughs> to, Honestly, this isn't it. the only one I like. There's three of them. There's Starborn, The Traveler, and uh, Soldier Zero. Yeah. And it, you know, this one's my favorite, but uh, I, I really like The Traveler, too. I, the Traveler yeah. is actually my favorite one oh, is so that your far. Favorite? Yeah. yeah. Bar none. That is, uh, I like the idea of like the, the, the anti minute men or whatever they are. Yeah, like yeah. The, the split yeah. second men. That yeah. was their name. <laughs> These four guys that control like the, the physics realm and everything. That's, they gave themselves that name. The split second men. That's what this <laughs> guy calls the guy. To him. The guy that. <laughs> uh, wow, I didn't see that joke coming. No. That one I did know. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You all right? I'm okay now. Huh? No, his. I'm here. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Dynamite <laughs> Publishing, Bring the Thunder, uh, covered by Alex Ross. This. Uh, I didn't bother with that series. Honestly, it's it's a little predictable, but basically this. Um, this black dude gets blown up by this alien type gun that he finds in Afghanistan. They're, they're coming under heavy fire from insurgents. He uses the gun. Okay. The gun incinerates his enemy and himself. So is this original or is this, this like... This is totally original. Dynamite does everything copy. No, this is totally an original concept from what I can gather. Wow. Uh, the only thing I didn't like was they, they kind of like just rushed you into the first problem of the story and solved it. Basically, at the end of the issue, of issue one, he's... It's a year later, he's re, like, you know, morphized himself in front of his house. He's back in America. He's totally naked. His eyes are glowing white. His house has been sold. That happened to you once, right? What? <laughs> Two and a half times. Two and a half? And so now, like, you know, he's got to find his family and everything. And he finds his family in, like, the first five issues. Uh, the first five pages of the second issue. Mm -hmm. They're living in the ghetto now. They're it's poor. Yeah. The government filed him as missing in action, so his wife didn't get any death benefits. <clears throat> Excuse me. His son is running with the local gang, so nobody bothers the rest of the family. Mm -hmm. And now this guy takes it upon himself, who apparently, thanks to the gun, has some kind of weird supersonic power, like his, his thunderous voice and shit like that. And he does the whole Hulk bell clap thing. Yeah. Um... And he's, he's basically taking it on himself to rid the neighborhood of gangs. 
And there's a lot of gangs, so he's got his hands full kind of thing. It's an original concept. How, like, terribly difficult was it to think up? Well, I don't know. I was going to say it's not that original. Right. Yeah. Like, the whole, the characterized, the characters and everything are, are original. It's not a copy of anything. It's not a reboot. But, well, you see, know. He's... It's a fairly As an artist, idea. we all love him. But as a writer, he, Alex Ross, he's not really... You know. And that sometimes mm. happens with, uh, you know, other guys like okay. Neil Adams, who tried to write this Batman Odyssey thing that I really didn't care for either. As an artist, they're fantastic. Yeah. As writers, well, and uh, you know, here we've got David Finch writing Batman, which, fuck it, anything will be better than Grant Morrison's shit. And I don't know if the David Finch stuff is actually good, or if I'm just so hard ask, up you... for a Batman book <laughs> that I just want something good. And I'm is. making it better than it is. I always root for artists at, like, writing. I, I go, I want them to be good because, like, it's a dream. Like, it's when a, you're an artist, do you just, like, yeah, want yeah. to, like, write your own stories. Because you're like stuck on that script, and you're just like, "Oh, wouldn't it be cool if this happened?" But you can't change it. You can't change yours, it. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. just re- that's I'm that's sure. the dream. You know, yeah. I, I definitely understand that because I mean, like I said, I went to art school and everything. I grew up drawing, but I also grew up writing. And mm-hmm. even though like I pursued the whole art career thing and everything, I'll always feel that I was a better writer than I'll ever be an artist. I was never like I never looked at my own shit for more than a day and said, "Wow, that's cool." Well, but the next day, I was like, "I oh, fuck that! I hate this shit. Get it away from me." <laughs> But I still like to actually Johnny write Recon. Stories. Sorry, the 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 book Mitch Garads. I, I couldn't remember the title. Oh, it's Johnny Recon. <laughs> Let's harken back. Remember that. <laughs> Sorry, that's okay. And, my brain and uh, does that. <laughs> here we've got the first from Image Studios, The Infinite Vacation. This is yours. Oh uh, yeah, some uh, one of our fans mentioned this on Facebook, so I picked it up. How was it? Um, this guy, his name is Mark, and it's uh. If you're Steve and you want to go on vacation, you go to a different universe. He is Steve. Where there's, yeah, where there's other Steves, and you could take either chill with your other Steve or take his place. So you could find what, a... What happens to that Steve when I take his place, though? I don't know. They haven't decided oh, okay. yet. Maybe but, he goes on vacation you, to you, another universe. You've seen Steve's them are constantly switch. moving around. Sometimes they talk to each other. Sometimes they swap places. Sometimes it's just you. So if you could find a Steve that runs a brothel in a different universe, then you're running a brothel. If you could go to a different universe where you're a multimillionaire, then for that one week or two, depending on how much you wanted to pay, you travel and you're a multimillionaire. But did they have, like, the, the one he's replacing, did they put up a fight? Like, how did that interaction No, go? it's, like, known. Where's the conflict of the oh, story? Just... There's no conflict right now. Except, um, for some weird reason, a lot of this main character, Mark, his char- um, other selves are dying. Uh-huh. So he needs to figure it out. And also this, um, oh, okay. That's nice. this That's unique a little nice girl. Promise. The art's very weird. It's kind of like that cookie. Jet Li movie, The One. Weird in a good way or bad? Um, it's... How does he... Well, they use photography at one point, which I'm not a fan of in comic books at all. How does he transform? Depends on how they mix it. I don't oh. like... Oh. Oh. Yeah. Like the whole thing's photography? No, just this, oh. the, the, the sequence explaining... Yeah, those are like those, was, those yeah. cine books. Like, like, I never got into that. That was a hell of a surprise. You so. would like that, I bet you? Michelle would probably like that. And this is him, like, you know... Going from and universe that's a funny universe. concept. And this is him and his other self who owns a surfboard um, store in Hawaii in a different universe. They look pretty close. And he got, yeah, because they're the same, same person. No, I mean, they look pretty close. Like, like, they're, they're buddies. Yeah. I mean, you, <laughs> who the fuck want to fuck yourself? I mean. A narcissist. Well, it kind of brings a whole new meaning to the term go, go fuck, fuck yourself. I knew that was coming. Wow, so next comic book. <laughs> the next comic book, oh, believe it or not, 200. is Spawn 200. Wow. It's been and I'm, I, I'm the only one that picked this. You didn't get this. I know no. for sure. You I'm get everything. It's not jump on friendly. It's 200. It is completely not jump on friendly. Here's my problem with this. I haven't read Spawn since, like, the Redeemer first showed up in issue tw- 18. 18 years ago? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, I think it was actually issue right, right around 18, and I think my last issue of Spawn was 24. I know a little bit about it. I know Malabolja got killed in issue 100. And ever since then, uh, um, there's I, a white spawn now. I know that much. Yeah, no, that, that's that's one of the things I heard that goes there was on a new here. Spawn, yeah, he's and then the old spawn took over Maljoba's place. Yeah, or? he's like Omega Spawn, and that was yeah. a big image oh, event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they, they actually reference, uh, you know, for anything involving Omega Spawn, see Image United. Really, really, see Image United. <laughs> when the fuck was the last time an issue of that came out? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, that and the 12, just never... I read out. this, <laughs> like, you get basically the concept of it. Uh, you know, there's another Spawn. Him and Al Simmons are now friends. This kid was never meant to be Spawn, but because Al is Omega Spawn, this kid's now Spawn. 
And because the costume was like split from Omega Spawn, the costume is like its own living entity. Remember uh -huh. that from yeah, the original right. issues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but apparently the costume has a lot of potential to be the most powerful thing in the universe, which I think is a little stupid. Well, in the image universe. Like, it could beat up God, basically. That's ridiculous. But right now the costume is a baby. God? It's a little baby costume. But if the costume is allowed to grow without, you know, being kept in check, it could become, like, really devastatingly powerful. But the costume can't do anything without a host, right? One would think. Is, it, is that I the think idea? So. I don't know. I think there was a time when Spawn, like, the costume did not have a host, and it was kind of like the Venom thing running yeah, around. Yeah, I saw that. It was like, like fighting I don't know why, but shit. I think I that's the case. That, yeah. If any of you guys out there know anything more about Spawn than I do, which is not a difficult thing to accomplish, <laughs> I assure you, uh, feel free to write in and just title that email Spawn411. That's information to you and me. Uh, tell, Spawn 411. Tell, tell them who your favorite cover was. Yeah, there was like tell seven them. of them. Oh, no, I'm tell getting them. to that. Tell that tell wait them. a minute. That's, that is the fucking icing on the cake for this. You guys know the drill. Uh -huh. Facebook.com. We can start a thread. Backslash Pete's Basement. Questions at PeachBasement.com. Spawn 411. Now I want to Now, one thing I have to hand this issue was the variant covers were all cover price. Except for like one or two. They were like a couple of sketch covers. But this is the McFarlane cover. Yeah. Uh, pretty lackluster, if you ask me. Like, as far as I'm concerned, when you have an anniversary issue, this is number 200, I want to pose like a very dynamic, regal very triumphant, boom. regal, regal yeah. thank you, great word, regal looking pose. That's this very is Silver Age that. traditional, though. I mean, I, I know what he was going this for This is, there. absolutely. Yeah, I know, he's, but yeah. it's been done. But yeah. well, this that isn't the, the Silver Age anymore. Yeah, was, and he hasn't yeah. been doing shit in a while, so fucking toys. We've also got the David Finch cover, which I actually bought here because I, I kind of liked this cover. And I like David Finch. He's a cool dude. I've met him several times at uh, several conventions. Um, we also have the Jim Lee cover, Ooh. which I didn't really care for. Wow. It showed Spawn and the Violator like running at the cover, which to me was kind of a take on the All-Star Batman, I think it was number one. I think it was Batman one, and Robin yeah. running at the cover. I think it was number one. <laughs> We've also got a Mark Silvestri cover, which was uh, the Violator and Spawn kind of on top of a rooftop. Eh, whatever. See, there was an Ashley very... Wood cover and a Greg Capullo cover. Finally, I can't believe I'm about to say this, my favorite cover, the best cover in my opinion for Spawn 200 was this one by Rob Liefeld. Da, da, da. What? <laughs> That's a good cover. And he can draw feet. He learned to draw feet. Well, he's hiding the feet behind his... All right. It took us four That years is the most dynamic like cover there shit. was. I couldn't believe... I like that song. I was like, I have to buy this and tell you guys. Because I can't fucking believe I'm saying it. It's coming out. I'm hearing myself say it. I he even got the arms and the chest right. It's all good. Look at him. He's actually looking at it. No he sunglasses. He can't believe it. Yeah, look at it. He had to take his sunglasses off for that. I don't think that's happened in the history of the Peach Basement He took show. an anatomy class. <laughs> A lot of it. <laughs> no, this is actually... You're right. Fucking this good. Is good. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, man. Jeez. Film this in slow-mo because my head's about to explode. <laughs> credit where credit is due. I always say it. Wait, Rob, wait, wait, wait. nicely done, man. Nicely fucking done. I've always been rooting for him. Yeah. Too many people pick on him. Absolutely, you know? man. Why you know, he's kind of... Underneath him? Like, it's true. Everybody picks on it's him. Like, well, myself included. I'm guilty. Yeah, but everybody loved him and he reinvented comics in the 90s and nobody gives him any respect for that. I man, felt so on. bad for Cable and Deadpool. Like, what if they lost their keys, man? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> fuck. But you know what? Like, and he just, but he really did keep plugging away. Like, he's like, fuck it. I don't yep. care. And he just kept doing what he loved to do. And that alone is commendable. Uh, you had actually, met, we were speaking about this uh, on the ride over here. Uh, Eric Larson did not do yeah. a cover. And he's actually still doing Savage Dragon. He's got, like, a small following, and he keeps doing it because... He is my favorite image founder because of that. He oh. loves doing it, what he does. That's, that's all enough. he wanted to do. He did it. And, and, and he keeps on doing it. Doing it. it wasn't bullshit. He didn't, like, you know... Yeah. No no offense to anybody else, but he didn't go and make a toy company, try to make a million dollars. Or sell he like just, Jim Lee did. Yeah, yeah I'm fucking bitter. Ooh. I'm not saying there's anything wrong. These guys did what they had to do. That's great. But, I, I mean, just, he really... He, Really said, this is what I want to do, and that's what he did. And, and, and he's still fantastic. doing it. Yeah, good for you, and Eric. He's like, yeah. I'm going to stop picking up the trades of Savage Dragon. You, know, you should, yeah. That's it's a great a, book. That's a good book. Yeah. So moving on to DC, um, what are, what's with those white covers? Like, oh, well, so. they did a, um, almost all their issues for the next... I think it's just this like week. Like the next maybe, couple of months. Like, yeah. It seems like a all, while. all month. Because I think everything. There was, the, there was stuff have, from last week, yeah, too. All their issues are going to have at least one cover. 
in which is just the main characters and the logo representing that book. Okay. Which is really cool. Design-wise, that, that's phenomenal looking, though. Yeah. It looks really cool. Which is cool. what? Birds of Prey. This is amazing. I Almost love this artist. Superman, I don't know who Steel, he is. Everybody. But the guy doing the oh, cover of Birds loud. of Prey. Argentum, Art. That's beautiful. Art Gem. He's amazing. He is. He does women. He's got a lash. He does men pretty fucking good, too, man. No homo. No homo. Just letting you know. <laughs> He's a fucking good artist. He does men spectacular. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. I follow him on Deviant Dart. Fuck no, yourselves. you're right. He draws really tight butts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're all jerk off. Which is fucked up because this is originally Ed Bennis's book. So for him to like step yeah. up and draw hot women the way he's drawing Wait, them. The, yeah, the person who's drawing the inside is doing very well. Yeah, yeah he's, he's doing, doing very, very well, well too. Yeah. So it's, it's, so. it's also a good book. No, it's good. If you can follow it. I, um... Well, I've been reading it since the beginning. So have I, but it's not as... I know, it's not. The most jump on friendly book. But the... Oracle's They, they want to kill off... Oracle herself wants to kill off her image. Yeah. So that people don't think that there's... That she exists anymore. And she... You know, people won't get hurt in her life. Yeah. Batman's in it. So. I remember hearing something about Real it. Batman. That she wanted to do that. Uh, real quick, Green Lantern, Emerald Warrior 6. Uh, glue 6. <laughs> yeah, it, it does spell glue. You pointed that out <laughs> earlier. You were very proud of yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said glue sticks or glue sticks? Uh, basically, Both. in this issue, Kilowog and Aresia find out that Guy Gardner made a pact with uh, Ganthet Atrocitus. and Atrocitus to basically figure out what the fuck was going on with the whole power rings being drained and, you know, the guard, this one crazy guardian taking all of uh, the... And know, it's supposed to be willpower entities. supposed to lead up to um, War of the Green Lanterns. Something like that. They all fight over each other, fight I at each other. I don't know, but uh, we do we do find out that you know they they meet this guy with the three eyes that's controlling all of the telepaths in the universe yeah, and that's whatnot, cool. and he kicks all their bloody asses. Yeah, and it's probably gonna be it's gonna be up to somebody to save them. I don't know who the fuck it's gonna uh, be. I don't know. But uh, real quick, crypto got my Green Lantern issue forty from eBay. This is the first appearance of Krona who is the main villain in this next Green Lantern story arc. I encourage you guys to get this now if you're at all interested in Silver Age key issues. Uh, get it before the price skyrockets. Uh, that was a mildly priced... Stop putting your sweat on things. Uh, that was mildly priced at... Uh, I got it for 42 bucks. Not anymore. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got nothing. I got nothing. Uh, speaking Superman, of nothing. Speaking of fucking nothing. This book, let me... All right, let me tell you about this book. I dropped that shit three or four He's issues. Still I don't know why. Still I tried. Around, right? I tried to stay with it to see where it was going. I stayed with this longer than you did. D don't even review it. Just say it's shit and put it down. But I, I feel like I should tell them why. Don't give that shit any more of your time and money. It's gone from walking around. Yes. I was gonna say it looks like he's flying now. He's. He looks like Superboy. They're not even a Superman. He's skipping. And then the last pages of. The Superman family from the future the Superman arrives. Squad. That's what it's called, the Superman squad. Oh, come on. He was walking around trying to get in touch with American life and things like that, and then that happens. 1990s called. They want their costumes back. Yeah, yeah. That's like... It's, it's bad. It's bad. Lee Fuse is good. Superman <laughs> sucks balls. What the fuck? It's I'm, the apocalypse. I'm, I'm no <laughs> one wanted to listen to me. I'm going back to the TD universe. I don't get it. That's his wife? I don't... don't no, stop no, asking no, fucking no, questions, no. Steve. Since he did so good with don't Brave and the Bold, Don't try to though. figure it out. Your brain will leak out your nose. And why did Brave and the Bold get canceled? I don't know. I'm so pissed about that. That was like my favorite. That book. was like an awesome story. It uh, was, yeah. It was exactly what I wanted comic books to be. One you know, issue, was, maybe two at the most, mm -hmm. of characters maybe you don't see all the time. Right. And you could actually fucking like read about somebody that you don't normally. Any issue, want. any given issue, you could jump on. Right. You know, it was like it that's, was the perfect comic. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Batman: The Return of Bruce Wayne hardcover comes out. Just what we want. And honestly, going on that, that's kind of why I'm I'm enjoying Heroes for Hire I at like this it point yeah. because. It, uh, comicbookresources.com says this is the type of read that comics were invented for. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh. And it does have... Basically, this is, it's totally <laughs> jump on friendly. There's, they review last week's, uh, last month's issue, and each issue is like a, a quick team up with a couple of different heroes. And there's one major plot kind of lurking in the background, Actually, which is what Brave and the Bold did for their first 12 issues. Yep. It was that whole... Uh, time travel kind right. of world conqueror thing. 
But then they stopped doing that. Every issue was, you know, each in and of itself was a self-contained two heroes. Well, even those story. issues, it, you know, it didn't matter if you were following that or not. Right. You know, you that, that, just, yeah. that was like the best part of it was you could see characters that you don't normally give a fuck about and enjoy them for 32 pages and put it down and never have to give a fuck about them again. Like Silver Sable, for example. Hey. Really? Or Paladin or Paladin, however you want to pronounce Paladin. that. I think it's Paladin. But okay. I do, well, I just in one of my segments I reviewed all my Silver Sable books. Mm-hmm. So one of the fans on Facebook said, "Steve, why don't you pick it up?" Okay. So, you say Tana's in this. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of characters no, running around in this. It's pretty I mean, cool. It's it's a good Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. It's a, it's yeah, a cool Blaze book. Ghost it was a lot of so. fun. And uh, it is fun. It's a, yeah. The puppet master appears to be the uh, evil Ring, villain the, behind it all. Right, ringleader. So, so I'm I'm gonna stick around with Heroes for at least for the first story yeah, me arc. Me too. And look who's writing it. And it's actually 299. Who's writing? Abnett 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 Abnett. Abnett. Oh. So they're not doing their well, uh, usual cosmic shit. Cosmic stuff. I'm glad because they kind of pissed me off last time around. Well, with what? He didn't like uh, uh, Nova going Kaputsky. Oh, uh, you didn't like the Thanos quest? I liked the book. I liked like that that whole part where they just killed off oh. him and um. Now they're fucking annihilated. Anyways, next book. Okay. <laughs> Daredevil <laughs> Reborn. It was better. Good old Andy it, Diggle. It was better. It was. It, it, Diggle. It was. It was. It, it was good. It was better. Than, it was. It's yeah. a little too soon. It's too soon. Yeah. And it's. When did he die? It's, it's predictable. When did the whole oh, thing happen? Totally. Two weeks like, ago. Like, fucking Matt somewhere. Murdock's walking across the U.S. He's in the desert somewhere. Winds up with the. There's some kind of you know conspiracy plot and who's like digging up bodies he finds and, bodies yeah, yeah. And, and where is he New Mexico or some place called the Badlands or some shit I, I don't know it's only four issues I'm gonna read it and I'll let you guys know Listen, don't buy it yet unless you're like a fucking hardcore Daredevil no. fan oh, don't buy it yet no. do we'll keep you for but it wasn't no. bad I mean it wasn't as bad as it could have been it could have been a lot worse I expected yeah. a lot worse yeah. I didn't hate this I just think it's too soon the only thing I thought was weird that he just happens to find the blind kid yeah, sitting outside to the remind diner. him of his youth and what he's fighting for. Pretty sure if you look yeah. up the word cliche in the dictionary, you'll find uh, that concept there. And the definition of cliche. <laughs> Touche. Thank you. <laughs> Widowmaker, number one. Uh, this is you, dude. Uh, I see Marvel's really trying to push their older characters, and Black Widow is an older character, yeah. and definitely not a B-list. She's like C or D. She's got a seriously pointy tit. Right Ain't there. nothing wrong with Let that. Just like Heroes for, she's Heroes for Hire is like Nah, those C-list. things are definitely C's to D's, man. <laughs> no, it's C-list I'm talking about. Oh. No, her boobs are C or D. Oh. Yeah. I'm talking about the list. Scarlett know, Johansson. Like, what if, Scarlett because Johansson Because of the, the Iron Man movies and the upcoming Avengers movies, and she like... She's she barely in the Iron Man movie. What did she say? Three lines in the whole uh, movie? That's fine. She's I mean, Scarlett Johansson. You know, but, but, and she's uh, single, too. But she's going to have a bigger, bigger part in the uh, Avengers movie, isn't she? Yeah. Have uh, a probably. bigger part, smaller outfit. Yeah. There you go. Anyways. Yeah. So this is Black Widow and Mockingbird. This is forced, I feel. It's forced. I mean, in her regular series, which I also read. She, she it has a regular of, series or the last mini series? No, the regular series. She's a rep. I don't know that. I know Hawkeye and Mockingbird. The artwork is not good at all. The is not good at all. And the story is, is like there's a new Ronin and uh, he's so the you know, seventh Ronin so yeah. far. So Ronin's a go-to character to fuck with. I, uh, I already picked up three of them, so I'm just gonna pick up the last one to see how it ends. But other than that, okay. You know, was, uh, and Hawkeye, I never really liked Hawkeye. I'll be honest. I never yeah, liked him. Yeah, I don't he's care for not, him either. All Green Arrow, same shit. They're the same character. Basically, same guy. Well, they're the same character with the same girlfriends. Very yeah, really. you know, <laughs> Black Canary, Canary, Mockingbird, and Fishnet girlfriends. <laughs> Blonde that's, hair, that's pretty yeah. Cool. yeah. yeah. Both birds. Wow, it's <laughs> fucked up. And Green Hour is out first, so fuck you, Marvel. Mm. Chaos War, Steve. Again, yeah. It's an event, if you want to call it the that. The artwork is well. The artwork is. I don't like the artwork. It's shit. I had to kind of push my way through it just to get just to read it, and it is what it is. I'll leave it alone. He also did, I think, Avengers Initiative or Mighty Avengers, and it was god awful. But uh. What's the name? Fam? P H A M? Koi Fam? Koi Fam. But in this, the, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh-huh. The Chaos King. Yeah. Wants to go back to things, how things were before the world became what it is. Just nothing. He wants nothingness. Yeah, he wants oblivion. Yeah, yeah. So he, he got a hold of um, Nightmare, which you never see anymore. So I no. like when he's in stuff. Mm-hmm. He killed him. He killed him. He took his power. So now if you fall asleep, kind of like what you said. Um, a bull- uh, um, Freddy Krueger on steroids. Yeah. Exactly. If you fall asleep, you kind of in you're in limbo and you're is being, that Gog? You're being controlled by him. There's a lot of fucking characters in well, this. What happens is Hercules learns about this. Hercules like amped up in this shit too. He took over his well, father's power. Well, Amadeus Cho, when he 
revived him, he gave him all this power. How? I don't know exactly how he did that. So Hercules has like 10 times the amount of power as he normally would have. Which is a lot. Which is a lot. He got Thor on his side, and he's getting all these people to help him. Um, so he got the God Squad back together. Mm -hmm. And um, even um, Zeus, I mean, there's one scene, I think it's maybe an issue two or three, where Zeus like punches Galactus in the face. That's that pissed cool. me the fuck which off. Is, which, is, <laughs> which is strange. Some shit, but, you just leave the fuck alone, and Galactus being an ass whooper is one of them. Galactus isn't the kind of character that gets punched in the face. Yeah, no, he doesn't. That was the whole. Yeah, He's like was, beyond that. Like yeah. you can't get close enough. Well, he to even do that. said something. I forget. I'll find it. But uh, he said something. He's, he, oh, of course, retorted to that. But it's yeah, what did he say? Um, little God, to return to your deaths and trouble Galactus no more. And then he just, you know, he goes. First of all, I don't think you could rightfully fuck with somebody that refers to themselves in third person. Because <laughs> they're crazy enough as it is. Right. Yeah. right. He's well, Galactus, famous. I always pictured him as, like, the science fiction god, but he was, like, the god of all gods. Mm. Like, yeah. to a god, he was a god. Yeah. I mean, he's that beyond powerful. He eats planets. You know? they it's eat fucked ambrosia. up because, like, they, they never Leave really... Leave the fuck alone. I don't think they properly established Galactus's power base. Like, I got the impression, to, too, that he's no, they older they than the gods. Like, he's been around He was around before. from the previous universe. Well, they yeah. mentioned, his origin. They mentioned yeah. that. They mentioned that. Because um, Hercules is trying to get up all these people to help him. And he summons uh, Galactus and Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer is like he was just in the middle of eating a, a world. Right now he's here. What do you think is going to happen? You know, so. it's like Galactus. He's still hungry. Galactus, right. like he dwarfs. Somebody took half all your cheese for Like yeah. you know, like the regular superheroes' powers, like even Thor or Silver Surfer. Right. And yet at the same time, uh, sometimes he's on the level with characters like Eternity and you know Epoch Eternity's and the rest of them too, yeah. and and the the fucking stranger and whoever else right. and then sometimes it's like he's not well he's not in this because Galact uh, Hercules is like if you don't help us it's going to go back to nothingness and you'll be nothing too he's like well I was before any of this I, right. su I was, he was. I was he survived the first one I survived one. the first one yeah. so yeah which was always the case. And actually, it wasn't, I don't think, until uh, Earth X that they really established Galactus's role in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Where he. The he reason didn't have he, a power. he was just a threat. He was always just a he threat. He was eating, yeah. he was a planet eater. Yeah. yeah, but the reason why he eats planets he came out in everything. Earth X. Right. Was there's within each planet that Galactus eats, there's a celestial egg. And when yeah. the egg hatches, it becomes a full grown celestial. And these guys are like the fucking badasses of the entire Marvel Universe. It's one of the few enemies he has. Yeah, so Galactus kills Ego. Celestials. Yeah, right. Probably because he eats their eggs. Yeah, they, they don't I'd like be mad. That'd be upset. That's what I'd say, yeah. Stop eating I don't my know, babies. Just... <laughs> and finally, we're going to end Peach Basement this week on a high note. And That's I'm surprising. so happy to yeah. be saying that so I'm ending good. that high note cool. with Amazing Spider Man. Uh, big time ended fantastically. Right. Uh, we. It doesn't really. I, I can't say it ends. I guess it begins, you know, at this point. Like, it, it sets ends, a it new ends status quo. the new goal. Hobgoblin story. Yeah, yeah there's a new thing. Hobgoblin. He's Phil Yorick. I mean, He's working as a reporter for a small metropolitan He's getting newspaper. pictures of the Hobgoblin. He's got an Uncle his, Ben. Right. He is the Hobgoblin. He's selling pictures of Hobgoblin. It's the opposite, almost. Of He's the complete opposite, and it's fantastic. I love the idea. I like the kingpin back at the top. Okay, I like that part. I like the fact that like the kingpin's whole like legitimate business crumbled, and he's like, "Fuck that! Enough with the legitimate shit. I'm a criminal. This is what I do. Right. Fuck you, motherfuckers!" And he's like, "I'm just going to be a criminal." The only thing I was uh, didn't really. And he's based in Shadowland. Take that, Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing is that his costume, the fact that he can turn invisible, I thought was just like. I hope that doesn't last. It's too a little long. lame, I, you know. This it new take on the black much. costume is a bit. You know, it, it was it was. Batman Beyond kind of took from Spider-Man. They basically made Batman uh -huh. into Spider-Man. Now it seems like Spider-Man's kind of taking something from them. Yeah. You know, the, the invisibility thing. They did make a like... Tron joke, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I appreciated yeah. that. Nicely done, uh, <laughs> Mr. Slot. And Ramos' artwork I've, I've, is growing on. It grows on you. Yeah. I like it. He does Sometimes he really gets good. a very busy panel, and it's a little hard to, you know. Yeah, just... He did a nice cover. Yeah, there's yeah, boobs. Yeah, yeah, he does black hair very good. So I am very much I, looking I, forward I like to, to the next Spider-Man story. I don't know about this whole Marvel Point One initiative, but uh, I guess we'll just wait and see. Because I don't know if it's going to be like Point One. Uh, it starts with Six Fifty Four Point One, which is a new Venom story. You meet a new Venom. We don't know who he but is. What is that volume? Well, that's what I'm guessing. Like, is it going to be Six Fifty Four Point One? Like, yes, this is exactly a good time it. to jump on it, and then it's going to be Sixty Six Fifty Five Point Two. No, it's just a Point One, and that's it. They shouldn't go back to it. So well, 650.1, and the next one will be 651. But why huh? the point one? 
to let you know that if people could, it's like a catching up issue, ideally. I don't understand, and I guess I'm going to have to wait and see. Have you heard about Marvel's next big event, the whole fear thing? Yeah, we were talking about fear that. Fear itself? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I'm it's, afraid of fear itself. It's of, of badness. Do you remember it's when, supposed to be a huge event, though. Yeah, but do you remember when huge events used to just span over the summer and that was it? Yeah, I know. Now it's every fucking third week. What is this but supposed Rubik to be? But is working on it. It has to do with sin. Really? And she's using all of the Red Skull's evil plans. We okay. love Captain America. The we sin, love Brubaker. Sin's yeah. an evil cunt of a bitch. Just make her more. I don't know how the fuck she's going to I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm expecting shit. All right, you know what? I heard Brubaker instead of Bendis, so I'm already <laughs> hopeful. Bendis yeah. is always involved. I know, but Brubaker is a sick writer. He is. And I love his work on Captain America. I love his work on Daredevil. So now that I know that, uh, I'm a little less afraid. Maybe? Yes, less afraid. It's kind of like turning on a little nightlight kind of thing. <laughs> you know? Which I still sleep with. Very good. Uh, Steve, what are you showing me here? You have an autograph chimichanga. Chimichanga. Yeah. So within two weeks, I got two different Eric Powell uh, yes, you did. autographs. So. Now we just have to kidnap him and get him down here. That's all we got. I mean, we don't. Invite him down here. Yes. 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 That's yes. what we meant. That's what it is. Yeah, we're, we're all invited down here. Yeah. We can leave at any time of our own free will. <laughs> so do you want to start? Please let my mother go. <laughs> So, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Hurts, right? <laughs> oh, it caught the one. The fucking one hand that I have. Ow. He sounds all chatty. Oh. The one hand oh, I got. Oh, that hand fucking fell. <laughs> I can't believe you're bitching about one hair. I just pulled off, like, fucking... <laughs> Did you see that, like, fucking spider thing I had? You taping, man? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. My girlfriend's gonna love this. <laughs> so, <laughs> what'd you do today? <laughs> so the video. Shot through the heart! And yo, I'm Nope. All right. <laughs> <laughs> God, oh, yeah. There better be Kool Aid coming out of that. <laughs> Dude, that was just in your shirt and you licked it. <laughs> At least it was in his own shirt. Yeah, if you can't lick yourself, then, you yeah. know. So. <laughs> I didn't know you were that flexible, frankly. You'd be surprised. Mm, no, find out? no, 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 no. This is taking a so, really bad turn. Yeah, no. Still happy we went with two takes? Are you now? No, I'm not. Um, did you move that wire out of your crotch area? On the other side, Ramon. There you go. Thank I know, I know. What are you doing? The wire is so close oh. to my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. That is now Ramon's mic. <laughs> <laughs> Can we borrow your silver marker? <laughs> it's 
bad. Leafy was doing good. Superman <laughs> sucks balls. What the fuck?